morning, guys. So our first stop with Globetrot Scott is going to be in Germany. And in Germany, we say Fröhliche Weihnachten. That means Merry Christmas in German. I'm staying with my friend Kurt and his family. We just finished decorating the Christmas tree, and now we are about to head into town to do some shopping. This is Christian Jamart. We are heading here to shop for foods and goods to eat. In Germany, Germany, Christian, a young girl dressed in white and gold, leaves gifts for children. And see, here's my friend's part, and it says a German tradition is to decorate gingerbread houses. This is the one we decorated. So they make gingerbread men and gingerbread houses in Germany. All right, and we're going to look at some other facts about Germany, okay? Germany is famous for the Christmas markets during Advent. Advent is the four weeks leading up to, leading up to Christmas. So they have these huge markets that they go and shop at. Advent wreaths are placed in the middle of a table with four candles inside. One candle is lit each Sunday, so every week you would light a different candle till you got there. Many children use Advent calendars to count down the days until Christmas. The Christmas tree originated in Germany, but it is not put up until Christmas Eve, so they wait way till Christmas Eve to put it up. Christmas children decorate gingerbread houses, which also originated in Germany. Children ask for presents by writing to Christian, the Christ child. So those are just some other facts about Germany. And you can see they put the German flag over here. And then these are some stories that come from Germany. And right here, you can see Cobweb Christmas. That's the story we're going to read today. So Cobweb Christmas, their tradition of tinsel. Because remember, we said that Christmas trees originated from Germany. And so tinsel is what you hang up around Christmas trees. So this is a, a tale about how tinsel came to be. It's written by Shirley Clemo, and it's illustrated by Jane Manning. Once upon a Christmas time, long ago in Germany, there was a little old woman. She was so little she had to stand on a stool to climb into bed, and she was so old she couldn't even count all the Christmases she'd seen. The children in the nearby village called her Tante, which means auntie in German. Tante lived at the edge of a pine forest in a tiny cottage, just large enough for her to keep a canary for singing, a cat for purring, and a dog to lay beside the fire. Squeezed up outside the cottage was a barn. In it, Tante kept a donkey for riding, a goat for milk and cheese, and she had a noisy rooster to wake her up in the morning, and a speckled hen to lay an egg for her breakfast. With so many animals about, her little cottage wasn't very tidy. But a bit of fur, a few feathers, or a spider web or two didn't bother Tante. Except once a year, when the days got short and the nights grew long, the old lady would nod her head and say, time to clean for Christmas. So let's think about that. It says when the days got short. So what you notice around Christmas, around especially around where we're at too, the days get shorter, which means it starts getting light outside. It's not light as much. The same thing happens in Germany. So the nights seem really, really long. And that's how they could tell that Christmas was coming. Then Tante shook the quilt and scoured the kettle until it shone. She scrubbed the floors on her hands and knees and stood tiptoe on her stool to sweep the cobwebs from the rafters. Phew, said Tante. She swished her broom and sent every spider and every wisp of web flying out the door. Then she cleaned her house from corner to corner. The little old woman nodded and said, time to fetch Christmas. Tante took an axe from the barn and hung the harness with bells on the donkey. She scrambled onto his back and they trotted into the forest. They circled around and around till the old lady cried, there. She pointed to a pine tree no bigger than she was. That's that one's just right, she told the donkey. Tante chopped down the tree, taking care to leave a bough behind so it might grow again. So that means that she wanted to make sure that there was a part of it so it might grow, so that she just didn't kill the tree. Then, bells jingling, they went home. Only now the donkey carried the tree upon his back, and Tante skipped along beside him. The tree fit perfectly in the tiny cottage. The old woman nodded and said, time to make Christmas. Tante made cookies for the tree. She baked gingerbread boys and girls. 
She rolled sugar cookies shaped like new moons and cinnamon cut cookie stars. She rubbed apples until they gleamed like glass to hang from the branches. Next, she put a red ribbon on a bone for the dog and tied a sprig of catnip for the cat. Ante scattered corn for the chickens and seeds for the canaries. And she helped heat oats into a basket for the donkey and the goat. So she used apples to help decorate her tree. Then the old woman nodded and said, time to share Christmas. Each year, Tante invited the village children to come and see her tree. Tante, they shouted, it's the most wonderful tree in the world. Tell me if it tastes as good as it looks, she would say. After the children nibbled on the apples and the cookies, and ate every crumb of gingerbread. They hurried home to put their shoes by the door for Kris Kringle. He was the Christmas visitor from, who went from house to house tucking gifts into waiting shoes. Then Tante asked the animals to share Christmas. The dog, the cat, the canary, the hen, the rooster, and some small, shy, wild animals crowded around the tree. The donkey and the goat peered in the doorway. Tante had something for everyone, everyone except the spiders, for they'd all been brushed away. But no one could give the little old lady what she wanted. All her life, Tante had heard about marvelous happenings on Christmas Eve. Annals might speak out loud, bees hum carols, or roosters crow at midnight. Tante wished she could witness a bit of Christmas magic too. She sighed and sat down in her rocking chair. Time to wait for Christmas, said the old lady, and she nodded and nodded her head. Tante was so tired from cleaning and cooking that she fell fast asleep. She did not know if the rooster crowed when the clock struck 12 or if the dog whispered secrets to the cat, and she did not hear the squeaky voices calling to her saying, let us in. Someone else heard, though. Chris Kringle was passing the cottage on his way to take toys to the village children. He stopped to listen and saw hundreds of spiders on D Tante's doorstep. We have never shared a Christmas, the biggest spider explained. Each year, Tante sweeps us away. Please, Chris Kringle, would you let us see Tante's tree? Chris Kringle looked down at the spiders. There's no harm in that, he said. Before he went on to the village, he opened Tante's door a crack. Huge spiders, tiny smart spiders, smooth spiders, hairy spiders, spotted spiders, striped spiders, brown and black and yellow spiders, and the palest kind of almost see-through spiders came. Creeping, crawling, sneaking softly, scurrying, burrowing, quickly and lightly, zigging, zagging, and weaving and wobbling into the old woman's cottage. The curious spiders crept closer and closer to Tante's tree. One, two, three skittered up the tray, trunk and all the other spiders followed. Silently they ran from branch to branch, back and forth and up and down the tree. Wherever the spiders went, they left a trail behind them. Threads looped from limb to limb and webs were woven everywhere. Now the busy little spiders had shared Christmas. They had seen and felt every twig of the tree, so they scuttled away. Then, when he had put a gift in all the children's shoes, Kris Kringle returned to latch Tante's door. He knew how hard the old lady had worked to make Christmas and how dismayed or upset she'd be when she saw her tree. But he didn't blame the spiders for being curious. Instead, he decided to leave a special gift for Tante, too. Gently, Kris Kringle touched each web. Beneath his finger, the slender strands gleamed like gold, and the dangling threads sparkled like silver. Now Tante's Christmas tree was truly the most wonderful in the world. So you can see he touched the spider webs, and it turned into that gold and silver. The rooster woke Tante in the morning. The old lady blinked in amazement at her glittering tree. Something magical has happened, she cried, and she climbed on her stool for a better look. 
At the top of the tree, she saw one small spider finishing its web. Ah, oh, Tante nodded her head. So it is you and your kin I have to thank for my Christmas magic. The little old lady understood that such wonders only happen once. Each Christmas thereafter, she did not clean so carefully and left a few webs in the rafter so the spiders might share Christmas too. And every year after she'd hung the cookies and the apples on her tree, she would nod and say, time for Christmas magic. And then Tante would weave tinsel around the branches until her tree sparkled with strings of gold and silver just as it did last Christmas on the last magical cobweb Christmas. All right, so in Germany, we found out that that's where they started making Christmas trees. And this is the story on how they believe that tinsel first happened, which we know tinsel is what hangs on the trees. And they believe that it happened as, a, as, a, as magic after a spider had made a web in a Christmas tree. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna connect to Seesaw and you're gonna tell me about some of the Christmas traditions that you saw that happened in Germany, all right? You guys did an awesome job. Thank you.